Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. We're doing one of my favorite shows again. Actually, they're all my favorite, but I have such a thing for water, I can't help myself. You know, we've done shows on the chemistry of water, the physics of water, how intent applied to water can alter the water. We've talked about shamanism in water. We've talked about Schoberger's spinning and vortexing in water. We've talked about everything but the hydrogen bonding angle of water. We've never done a show on distillation. We've never done a show on how hydrogen impacts water. We have done a show on the frequency of water and how if you change the frequency of water, the water can be different. But there is tremendous market confusion for consumers about what really purifies and cleans water. I've interviewed so many people who are pioneers in their field. But one of them I'm particularly interested in is John Ellis. He is the founder of John Ellis Water. It is where the hydrogen bonding angle of water is very different. It is where hydrogen is impacting the distillation in such a way that it is clinically so clean that it is considered 827 times purer than your tap water. It is considered water that can be applied to well water and actually cleaning dirty, filthy, uh, viralized, bacteria-laden water. People have healed and gotten rid of their sicknesses from this water. And because there's such market confusion, even myself, who has been interviewing and dialoguing with people since 2004 about water, really needs to talk to John Ellis. Now, a little bit about him. There's so much to say about him. Actually, I could probably go an hour just introducing him. But one thing you should know, he is formerly from Douglas Aerospace and Honeywell, where he worked on a distiller steam plant design. He actually is also uh, manufactured a micro switch. He is huge on evidence and data. And if you're going to brag about your water, then you should be testing it in the labs. But you can't just test it with anything. What he's saying is you need a Doppler ultrasound, which is non-invasive, and a scanning and tunneling electron microscope to really look at what's going on with the water. Are there viruses and bacteria in it? One of his main discoveries of the many that he's discovered is how you can go back and forth from hot water to cold water and hot water to cold water. There's something in the process of this that actually changes the nature of the water and makes it clinically remarkable for the body. He read something and was inspired by a book called The Alchemist on how if you do this heating and cooling of water that you could have a kind of magic water. But we can't really say it's just magic water. There's something clinically happening that has to do with the hydrogen bonding angle of water. Would you please give a warm welcome to John Ellis, who's been at this for over 37 years, to talk to us about what is this water? What is the hydrogen bonding angle? What do we have to learn? And what do we not know that many of us who consider ourselves smart consumers need to know about water? Welcome, John Ellis, to It's Rainmaking Time. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for being with us. Great to be here. All right. I think the first thing I really need you to explain to us is a couple of the tools that you measure the water with. Talk about the Doppler ultrasound and the electron microscope that scans and tunnels uh, the water and why it's oh, okay so the way that all happened was as follows a uh, very quirky as uh, a preference uh, when I was at Choate school I was about 16 years old in your introduction uh, I was reading a book about the alchemists they're the fathers of modern chemistry and in that book they mention that heating and cooling water produces mystical qualities. Now, in those days, of course, they didn't have electron microscopes and uh, Doppler ultrasound and things of that nature to measure all the properties of water. And so then years later, when I was inventing this machine, I'm a graduate of Lafayette College, and I also have a degree in includes 
steam plant design, that came to mind. And that's so I figured out a, and developed a machine that would do exactly what they were talking about. Now, as time went on, finally in, in the late 80s, there was a uh, wealthy landowner, Lakota, Mexico. And he bought a machine from me, and he was treating his well water. And they've done thousands of wells now. You use 10 gallons, that's all it takes, one time. It'll last for a year and many times years. Well, he noticed that a farm dog that was dying got better immediately. People in the area are getting better. So then he bought more machines, and he's running all this water into the well, giving it away. Finally... A uh, Washington Post reporter heard about it, and he went down there to Mexico and then wrote an article about it. 10,000 people a day going there and so on. It's on our website at johnellis.com. You can look at that article. Well, I didn't know anything about it at the time, and I was at an airport in New York, and a man rushed up to me with a half a jug of water and said, thousands of people are going to Mexico to get your water. And, of course, I really didn't believe it. I thought he had lost <laughs> it. And then somebody sent me the article. Well, that got this thing started. And what I'm guessing now is that Dr. Uh, Dr. Guy Abraham, he was at UCLA Medical School. He taught in the medical school. And he was doing independent research on water. And naturally, he wondered, why is our water different than any other water? And he said, nobody can argue with something you can measure. And we can measure the ability of blood, 94% of water, to go through a membrane into the cells to the extremities. Nothing's even close to your water. Now, we knew that already anyway. Diabetics saving their feet, MS, cancer, Sloan Kettering's right in New York City here and so on. And I can tell you more about that. But he wondered, now, why is this water different? So he's one of the first people to check with a tunneling scanning electron microscope that hydrogen bond angle. He said, you've opened it up. You've got H2O. There's a molecular bond angle of 104 degrees, or to be exact, it's 104.5, in ordinary water. And it takes a lot of energy, of course, for your body, which works by electrolysis to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. Ours is at 114, and he made that comment. That's why the water's different. And, of course, now they've done that hundreds of times. Uh, the Doppler ultrasound part of it, that's what they would use, you know, for testing the, the blood flow in the arteries and so on. I want to go back to Guy Abraham, and I want to talk about that. Uh, you were kind of on a roll when I was trying to let the audience know that Guy Abraham is the man who spent a lot of time in the area of iodine. And so, exactly right. So, so for him, this is a very, very big deal. I think it's a very important thing that you mentioned, Guy Abraham, that he real he recognized you as opening up the hydrogen bonding angle, John. Yeah, he's, a, he's a phenomenal man, and a lot of his friends, they're all MDs, called me, and I remember one doctor saying to me, "In your lifetime, very few people like Doctor Abraham will cross your path," which I thought was a pretty good comment. Well, can we talk a little bit about? Why is the hydrogen bonding angle for the public so important? And what is the device that is measuring this importance? Well, they can use a tunneling scanning electron microscope. That's what they use at the uh, you know Bell Labs and everybody else. I know they've Lawrence Livermore, all their scientists years ago, they bought them. In fact, at first, it was kind of interesting. We had an ad in a newspaper, and the uh, ad manager got calls from Los Alamos Nuclear Lab. And uh -oh. their scientists <laughs> just couldn't believe that somebody had actually been able to do this. So they bought a machine, and then they called him and said, you know, we're wrong. He's right. He did change that hydrogen bond angle. The main thing for your audience is this. Your body 
splits water into hydrogen and oxygen. That's what your body uses a lot of energy to do that. Now, if you drink our water, there's a picture of me on the on the website. I'm not sure when that one. I think you were age 40. Yeah, that's sort of a pretty boy. Uh, you've ne- you've never up, aged. That's a studio shot. So you've never aged. Good. John, you haven't aged a day from this water, I can that, tell. Well, that's right. That's the point. And then there's another picture of me on John, let's see, watercuresanything.com. If you scroll to the bottom, I'm 80 years old in that picture. But you just don't change much. And that's the thing. All these people that write about water and, and you know, the so-called experts, look at their pictures, and then you'll know if they know what they're talking about. You've got to change that hydrogen bond angle. Now, here's what that's all about. I received a call here a few months ago from a scientist in Zurich, Switzerland. And I'm, th- I'm pretty sure it was because of Gilbert D. Donat. He's uh, Prince Rainier's cousin. He's 94 years old. In fact, I called him the other day, and uh, it was 2 in the afternoon. And he said, yeah, I just walked 40 blocks, and I think I'll have my lunch now. And he's 94 years old. Well, he goes all over Europe talking about them, and he said he'll be in Monaco in, uh, in June. And he had told me to ship uh, more machines over to Monaco. But anyway, so that's where I think the publicity over in Europe comes from. But anyway, so this man in Zurich, who, like I said, uh, he's a scientist, He had elephantitis in his legs. That's where the legs swell up like a balloon. And he told me, I've had your Electron 5 machine for only 24 hours. And I want to tell you two things that happened. Number one, I haven't worn shoes in years. I've had to wear special sneakers made for me. In 24 hours, I lost all that water weight in my legs. They went back to normal, like a miracle. And... I went to a shoe store and bought a pair of shoes size 10. Now, to get at the subject that we're talking about, the hydrogen bonding. And I want to stay on that subject. Said, using 100 watts of power by electrolysis, you know, that splits water into hydrogen and oxygen. He said, I can't believe how much hydrogen your water produces. It violates Faraday's law. That's Michael Faraday. He said, why is that? I said, the answer is very simple. It's just like the human body. It takes a lot of energy to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. At 114 degrees, it doesn't take much energy at all. And he says, do you know what you've discovered? You could heat your home, produce electricity, and power your car for pennies. I said, yeah, I know that, but the problem is we're in the United States, and I'm not so sure they're going to like that. They're definitely not going to like it. And then shortly thereafter, a man that makes hydrogen generators for trucks, that's where they blow, they split the water molecule, and then they blow the hydrogen into the carburetor to, to produce better mileage. Well, normally the trucks draw 31 amperes of power to power those hydrogen generators. Well, he had heard about us, and he called our other property in Pennsylvania. And by the way, if your your listeners want free water, they'll even send you free bottle of water. But anyway, so he got a bottle of water, and then with a medicine dropper, he added only 20 drops of water to the regular distilled water that they use in, in the hydrogen generator. In the ammeter, you can look at com. There's a video there. You can see the ammeter. Normally, it's at the 31 amps. Well, it gradually, it's a cascading effect. It's a gradual thing. Went down to virtually zero. It's about one-half to one amp. That's all the power required to produce the same amount of hydrogen. Wow. Now, that is also the key to free energy. All this money that's been spent by Obama on Solyndra and all that, it's just a waste of money. All they've got to do 
is do exactly what we're doing, and to get the process started, it doesn't take much energy at all. You can use your ordinary electricity for a few minutes just to get the action started. You could use solar, and you could produce all the power you need for your whole home very inexpensively. In fact, I got an order yesterday. A man called here from uh, St. John's, and they pay 53 cents per kilowatt. And he bought a machine from me immediately because I told him, as soon as I make these hydrogen generators, well, the only people who are going to get them, are obviously, would be people who have those machines. And we're wondering whether we could even make enough to fill the, the volume of orders that we would receive for that. But anyway, when the man that makes the hydrogen generators got those results, a man that works for me, he's a retired electronics engineer from the military, said, you know, that's impossible. There's got to be a mistake somewhere. Well, anyway, they've done it hundreds of times already now. We know it works. But the proof of the pudding is this. In the water industry, the reason your listeners are so confused by all these different people out there, most of them don't even have degrees in this field. Some might have a degree in another field, but that doesn't make it an expert at what we're doing. I want you to go back a little bit to Faraday's law and how the hydrogen, the, the what you're doing with the hydrogen bonding angle and the water defies Faraday's law. Explain Faraday's law. Give my listeners okay, the Faraday's si- law is science. This. If you put a certain amount of energy in, you're going to get a certain amount of energy out, period. That's all you're going to get. What we're doing is we're producing a lot more energy than they're putting into it. Huge amounts of energy. And that's the key to free energy. If your listeners want to look, live a long time, look great or whatever, all they've got to do is what we tell them. In fact, I wrote a health course about 40 years ago. But if they just follow some of the things that I'm telling them to do, they can live as long as they want to live. The question I have to you is the following. I mean, obviously, if you have all these people, Los Alamos and all these laboratories and these big, you know, military-based labs that are checking into you, you're obviously on something huge. Here's my question. Is hydrogen, when you split that, when you uh, split the bonding angle the way that you do, is, is there such a thing as too much hydrogen for the body? No, no, because your body ought to, you've got H2O. And when you split the water molecule, you get twice as much hydrogen as you get. You get two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. That's what your body does. So when you take in, in water, any kind of water, just like people, they buy RO or the, in fact, Regular distilled water, they never tell you this, the bond angle is only 101 degree, the worst water you could drink. We call our water light distilled, and also it'll make light tap water. And the light tap water you can make even faster, up to 10 gallons an hour uh, if you want to, you know, 240 gallons a day. And that water is the only water, it's a matter of public record at the Department of Environmental Quality the DEQ, when it treated an untreatable, quote-unquote, municipal waste lagoon. I can go into that if you wish. I do want you to go into this, but I want you to hold one second for my next question because it all ties in. And, you know, you're so knowledgeable, I, I really have to lay the framework for that's the audience. That's problem. I know too much I know, but that's, that's, that's okay. I'm so delighted. <laughs> I'm so delighted to have you. If you bear with me and are patient, hey, you're, we're going to... Yeah, unf- you're great. I love gonna, what you do. Thank you. We're going to unfold this together. Here's my question. In effect... That application reminds me of a little bit of homeopathy in the sense that you take... Exactly right. Okay, you take 10 gallons to a whole well, and then it treats the entire well. That's right. So my question is, what is occurring there? It's cleaning all the viruses and bacteria that are in that well. And how long? How long do you have to wait? it's, It's like when they produce power with our water. It's a cascading effect. 
In other words, we're changing the properties of that water, and it's so powerful. And that's why they say, I mean, that this is the Washington Post and a lot of other people, cures anything, quote-unquote. What happens is that water changes the properties of all that water, and they could be millions of gallons of water. It doesn't matter. That's what it does. And I'll give you an example of Sure, that. sure, thank you. A young girl in Ohio did over, this is about 10 years ago, maybe now, eight years, I'm not sure, did over 200 wells with her father making the water. And even the state inspectors, she wrote me letters about it, how they would shake their heads to why that works. And I'll give you an example. At these restaurants where they're supposed to have a certain amount of chlorine in the well water, they would go there and test it to make sure chlorine was in the well water. Well, after treating with our, our water, there'd be no chlorine. So the inspectors would say, well, add more chlorine. And we'll test it again. So they added more <laughs> chlorine. Then they test it again. No more chlorine. It kept going on like that. And finally, the inspector just threw their hands up and, and, and approved it. But that, what it does is it changes the properties of other water. Now, if people keep drinking the water today, and I'll tell you a lot more things that are a lot worse about water that most people even realize. They can buy all the purifiers, RRO filters, distillers, whatever they want. And that relates back to the Associated Press that called me about it a couple years ago. What Exactly what's in the water. When you have your water tested, they do not tell you what's in the water that actually is going to ruin your health. You and I both know, and the listeners know because they're very educated, that the water you and I drink out there, if we have uh, tap water or RO, there's still a lot of chemicals in that. A lot of chemicals. Well, what there are is in the water. If you go to johnella.com, and, and on the sidebar, click on the scientific end of it, where you'll see a virus and bacteria destruction chart. There's about 25 or 30 of them on there. And most of them, what well, you wouldn't want to know about what they can do to you. But they all have a different destruction time, each one. None of the products out there allow enough time to destroy them. Here's an example. People wonder how they get hepatitis. The hepatitis virus can withstand over 30 minutes of boiling. So let's say you had a regular distiller. The virus, of course, will go right through the, any filter, or whatever. But in a regular distiller, that virus will travel with the steam and survive. Just like some heavier minerals travel with the steam in ordinary home water distillers that people buy, that's why the TDS, total dissolved solids, it's not 0.00. .00. It's always more than that. Explain that. That's Explain that. Carry over. So obviously those viruses, they're carrying over also. So here's what our machines do. It's what you alluded to in the beginning of the conversation or the interview. We're heating and cooling over and over again. Now here, here's the way this developed. The doctors had thrown catering. So can you do this? We went to Corning. See, they always like the fact that we recycle the water. That part they like. To give plenty of destruction time, which nobody else does. We have 13 patents on it now with more coming down the pike. We went to Corning. And by the way, when I was developing these machines, I kept in touch on a regular basis with the Corning scientists. They developed the best lab distillers in the world with all kinds of baffles and things of that nature to keep the virus and bacteria from traveling over with the steam into the ultra-pure distilled water. So I went to Corning, and they came up with a special form of quartz for the bulb that goes on the top of the boiler of our machine. And then an aerospace firm builds the transformers for us. So the first machine we came up with was the Electron 4. 
And then after that, we came up with the Electron 5 with two bows, a more powerful dual transformer. Phenomenal. Now, the reason for that was this. You'd say, well, why not just use one bulb? Why two? Here's why. When people get these flu shots, every year they keep changing the formula because they, the viruses keep getting stronger and stronger. They're mutating. Like a shot that worked five years ago wouldn't work next year and so on. So the way it works is this. In the boiler, we throw it to the surface. Like when you boil water on a stove, it'll, at some point, it'll start to froth. We throw it to the surface, your viruses, your bacteria, your drugs, your markers, whatever diseases those people have that they're flushing into the groundwater. Wow. We throw it into the surface, then we hit it with high-intensity ultraviolet modular frequency and heat. The water goes from the boiling to the boiler feeder tube into the condenser tank, and yet it's a very small, lightweight machine. only weighs about four and a half pounds, and it goes back and forth. <clears throat> now, we don't do that once, and we don't do it twice. We do it three times a minute, hundreds of times for every gallon you're making. So therefore, you're making light distilled, and then the cooling water that comes in, there's a little valve, you can put a little more than a drip to feed water to the machine. That's heavy, or it's denser, it goes to the bottom of the tank. That water goes back and forth through the boiler hundreds of times per gallon. When it gets hot enough, it rises to the top and goes through the overflow. So once it warms up, turn up the flow a little bit. Now you can make 10, gallons an hour of that water and that's the water they use on the waste lagoons and so on and I'll give you that one quickly it has to do with a five acre municipal waste lagoon out in Colorado and with ten and a half million gallons of E. coli and of course the noroviruses that you've been hearing about recently on the ships people are getting sick on the cruise ships and all right. that Right. And it smelled for miles. So the town is paying $10,000 a day in fines to the state for months because they could not get rid of the smell. I and mean, what they did, all these billion dollar companies didn't have a clue. They couldn't fix it. And I'm sure they'd never thought this would work. But, you know, desperate people do desperate things. Yes. So they. They ran a thousand gallons of the light top water. They sprayed it on that five acres, and then they waited 24 hours because, like I said, it's a cascading effect. Just like when you change the hydrogen bond dynamo in rugged water. 24 hours later, smell gone completely. So it saved them millions of dollars because they didn't have to build waste treatment plant, and of course the taxpayers are very happy with that. And right after that happened, a man by the name of Heminger was his name, in Vail, Colorado. And years ago, he worked for Dole Foods. And he knew that Dole was having a problem, because you've got to remember also, when these people take these cruises or, or all the uh, vegetables and things that you buy at your supermarket, they've been grown in E. coli. So obviously you got the E. coli, the noroviruses, and that's why people buy our machines and wash their vegetables. And, oh, this is great. So this is great for washing vegetables. That's, you, that's know, exactly. you know what, John? I've always wondered, because right now I wash my vegetables with baking soda, because I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, <laughs> anything is better than nothing. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Dole Foods had a serious problem. Mold spores... We're destroying the banana plantations, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Honduras, and also all their vegetables and all those kind of things. So what they did was they used a, a chemical. I could mention the name of the company, but I won't mention it. But anyway, if you want to, you can. If you want to, you can. And all they did, 
They injured thousands of farm workers, the men sterile, and so on. So it cost them millions in lawsuits and so on. So he knew that they were having a problem, and he started sending them a light tap water, that's the cooling water, over a nine-month period for testing in their laboratories and so on. And what happened was this. Every time it would come back with positive results, over and over again, because the results were so good they couldn't believe it. So they finally called Murray, Heminger is his name, and, and they asked him, he said, you know, to comply with the international food regulations, we have to know what is in the water you're sending us. He said, there's nothing in the water. It's just water. I said, wait a minute. That's what they've been testing for nine months? It's only water? He said, yeah, you don't believe your own tests? So finally... Dole sent us a seven-page contract because of that. But a lot of people do not realize what they're getting into. And here's why. Here's what they don't tell you. You can have your water tested all day long, and the tests are basically meaningless. Why? <clears throat> Number one, you're not going to get good blood flow, that's for sure. The other thing is, the reason the Associated Press called me a couple of years ago was for the following reason. You've got millions and millions of people taking drugs today. You've got the markers, whatever diseases those people have. That's why they give you a blood test. First thing when you go to the hospital, they want to see if you got the CEA-125 marker for cancer, MS, diabetes, or whatever. So they flush into the groundwater. Then it ends up in your spring water, your bottled water, your well water. They're all loaded, and eventually it spreads to the municipal water systems. So they did exactly what I told them, and they picked the city. They picked Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where they're supposed to have good drinking water. Just like I told them, 57 drugs in the drinking water. Every city they tested, 41 million people didn't even know it. And here's the point of the whole conversation. And then we're going to go to a quick break. Go ahead. When I was in engineering school in the early 50s at Lafayette College, I didn't know anybody with cancer. It was rare. You never heard of fibromyalgia, MS, diabetes was rare. Today they are all epidemics. It's just like for the same reason as the flu shots. They keep mutating, getting stronger and stronger. All your water, when you have your water tested, like I said earlier, they don't tell you what markers or whatever's in the water, and they try to make you think. It's just like with the terrorists. Because of the sheer volume of water, that they can't harm our water supplies. Listen, which John. Is completely false. John, hold one second, please. Hold one second. Um, we're going to go to a quick break. I want to talk to the audience about something, and then we'll be right back. And I have some critical questions for you. Stand by. Okay, Kenner. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you a little bit about compatibility and business. Everywhere you look, people all over the world are basing what they're doing on the fact that they are going to have compatibility with their partners, their associates, their staff. And this assumption of compatibility is usually predicated on synergy and chemistry. And in fact, while chemistry and synergy is important, it's distinct from having an alignment of purpose. Totally distinct. So, for example, you can have a structure. Let's take NPR. Let's use an example that actually happened with me. NPR was interested in its rainmaking time, and they submitted a contract to me. And in one part of the contract, two words in the contract allow NPR to basically legally take the show make it their own, walk away with it, and never have to talk to me again. And so 
while one could say, oh, it's rainmaking time would be great on NPR, right? One would think it would be great. Look at all the discoveries and new knowledge and breakthroughs that you cover and the thinking that gets opened up. And that level of discussions with pioneers and visionaries and heads of industry and leaders all over the world. One would think that, right? But in reality, the relationship is based on a legal instrument which is totally antithetical to cooperation, totally antithetical to accountability, rude, obnoxious, and to me, if you can steal what somebody has and never have to talk to them again, it's criminal. So, it's not compatibility. And so we have assumptions about compatibility based on who an organization is, but how they operate, how they do business, their agreements, their processes and protocols are the filtering mechanism that distills the way John's machine distills the water and cleans the water from viruses and bacteria, the rain-making company will work with you on your agreements with anybody, any organization, anywhere in the world, and we will distill for you whether you have bacteria and viruses in your agreements with people that are part of the consciousness of the culture in which they function. And if you think that this is just a metaphor and not real, I have evidence for 25 years of this. And so I would like to offer those of you listening an opportunity to have me come and, and work with your staff and your team so that people are on the same page and you can have clients and business associates and partners that are coherent with what you're about and what you're doing and not incoherent, and the way that you can look for incoherence and distill it is in the way that people do business. Some of you, if you're pioneers, don't know it. You need security protocols for today. You're not talking on private phone lines. You don't even have uh, basic private emails. You don't have communication that's safe. You're giving away your trade secrets. Your places are monitored. You have governments monitoring you. You have people monitoring you. So. Many of you that have next generation solutions and discoveries aren't even prepared to do what you're needing to do to secure what you've got, to put it into the new infrastructure of today, to get the knowledge out, and you certainly don't have agreements that are commensurate with the level of contribution that you're making. I'm the chief executive officer of the Rainmaking Company, and I'm quite serious about supporting and serving the people and the companies that have something so great to bring to the world. And let's get back to John Ellis. If you want to call the Rainmaking Company, call 626-398-8652. Go to rainmaking.com. There's a contextual uh, context piece on there. And feel free to give me a call. John Ellis, back to you. You still hey, there? That's great. Well, you just had to say, Kim. Thank you. Well, I, I wanted I hope to use your a, people listen to I that. hope so, too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, anyway. well, I I want to I want to clarify something out of my own ignorance and lack of information. You know, years ago, John, when I was a young girl, I was told or I read, and I don't remember which because it was too many years ago, John, that distilled water leaches minerals out of your bones and your body. Is that true or not true and why did we get that false information? You know, it's not completely false. Here's why. You've got to remember this. Regular water, like we discussed earlier. Yes. 104.5. That's your hydrogen bond angle, right? Yes. Regular distilled, the worst part of regular distilled, is the bond angle is 101, 101 degrees, which means it takes more energy for your body to split water into hydrogen and oxygen so it can be assimilated. So in other words, you're using more energy. That's the worst part of it. Now, as far as just saying, well, drinking regular distilled water, you know, leaches minerals and all that kind of thing, it's absolute baloney, and I'm a good example of that. I've been drinking this water for, what, 
Well, it's from my own machine, so I can't give an exact <laughs> answer. 40 years? But say 40, <laughs> 50 years or whatever. I'm 6'7". I never broke a bone in my life. Not, I'm going to knock on wood now. <laughs> Do you have osteoporosis? When I was almost 70, and I'm not really a weightlifter, I lift some, I reverse curl the weight over the world record, and I didn't know it at the time, but the people at the time, you know, a lot of other weightlifters and all, people that work for me here, they looked it up, and the world record was something by a, a Russian, around 180-something pounds, and I had gone way over that. And it's all because of the water. The other thing is, I've got a son drinking the water since birth. He's six foot eleven, strong as an ox, and he's not fat or anything like that. This water works. That's why we sell it, and that's why I sacrifice a lot selling to the ordinary public. And the reason I say that is this. Years ago, a man, that uh, Steve Bender, he had these ovens, you know, that blow the hot air around in the ovens and all that kind of thing. And when, and he, but he also had a company he owned vacuum die casting, uh, made heaters in huge volumes, and it's the kind of a heater that we needed for our water machines. And um, he said to me, "You're not going to sell those to consumers, are you?" <laughs> And I said, yeah. I said, I'm trying to help people. Well, apparently he used to sell those turbo ovens to, you know, to Macy's and all the big stores and all that kind of thing. And I guess, I don't know, maybe he had a few problems with it, with, you know, with that dealing with the general public. But my attitude is this. If I save one person's life a day. Okay, now listen. couple of things. So my question was about leaching stuff from the body. You said only if the hydrogen. Well, my my uh, the essence of what I got is if the if the hydrogen bonding angle is one hundred and one. Yes, right. it will. Then, but, then you're using up a lot of extra energy. Right. Right. And you're depressing your immune system because everybody has an onslaught of viruses and bacteria from their general environment. It takes energy, your immune system takes up energy to fight off disease. So therefore, some of that energy that could have been used more wisely is being used to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. And so therefore, I can't give you a definitive answer on that one. Here's what happens. Regular distilled water to reach equilibrium will absorb. In fact, they even used to call it hungry water. But I can't say that the water that I drink has any of those qualities because it's, our water is completely different. And like I just mentioned, if it was taking minerals from my body, how it up pushing 70 years old because I reverse curl, a weight over 200 pounds, never break a bone in my life, and be as strong as I am. One of my degrees is steam plant design. And I knew that, that, that that's not the kind of water that I would drink. And I think probably in those days I was way ahead of my time anyway, and I could give you a quick story on that, but I don't know how much time. Okay, but wait, wait I want, we have just a few minutes left, but hang in there with me. So basically, because the molecular structure of your water is different, the effects are critically different. Now, I want to go to something else now. We're going to leave that for just a moment. There are people I've interviewed, including from the electronic, formerly from the Electronic Warfare Division of the Military, Clayton Nolte I interviewed, and he sells these filters, and they vortex, and they spin, and agriculture grows better. Jack Benveniste talked about how water has memory. He finally got validated. Uh, Dr. Pollack in Washington is doing a lot of work in analyzing and trying to understand water. I don't know if he's contacted you yet, but if he hasn't, he should. And the reality is that there seems to be a little bit of confusion in the sense that there's the chemistry of the water and there's the physics of the water. And one of the things I asked to Clayton Nolte of Natural Action Water was, if you're putting, uh, if you are filtering and vortexing through a filter in your pool, the chlorine, and you're saying that this changes the, the frequency of the water, 
okay? And right. I go into the pool and my skin's not dry anymore. Answer my question, is my skin still taking in the chlorine? And he couldn't answer me. He couldn't answer me. And therefore, not that he's not doing good work, but I have a problem not getting that answer because I don't want to go into a pool, even though there's a lot of sickening things in pool, chlorine's also horrible for you. But it sounds like maybe not only could your water treat pools, wells, ships, but it sounds like, you know, uh, 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 new, I don't even know. Do you think it could treat nuclear waste? Yep, we know it works on that. I'm going to tell you how that happened. I'll make it quick. Okay. On Long Island, New York, Brookhaven National Laboratory, at the time in the 80s, the largest government research lab in the country, on a 5,000-acre preserve. Well, we didn't find out till later what the problem was, but we're selling our machines, like hundreds of them, to them, those scientists out there. And we wondered at the time why they were buying so many machines. The way it turned out was this. They had a nuclear reactor. They accidentally made all the water under Long Island, the aquifer, radioactive. The cancer rate was the highest in the country for a while out there, and of course, now it's everywhere. But they never told us that. The public didn't know it. And then finally, the public found out about it, and the scientists and engineers, they live all around the perimeter of that 5,000 acres with their children and grandchildren and so on and so forth. And when they called me, they said, the reason we bought your machines, like we did, you have the only machine that right recycles the water hundreds of times per gallon to get rid of the radiation. Nobody else does that. That was the answer right there. Okay. So I have another I have a couple of more questions for you. Hang in there with me. We're coming into the infield. We're almost hitting it out of the park. I think we are hitting it out of the park. <laughs> I love the way you talk. That's great. <laughs> so here's the thing, John. Some people say, uh, pretty prominent people people, some are no longer with us. That if you vortex the water, you can clean the water. Do you agree with that or disagree with well, that? Well, what you do is when you vortex the water, just like if you had a lot of minerals in water, right? If you vortex it, all the, anything that's heavier will fly out to the, to the extremities, away from the center. And you can produce some energy that way. But let me digress just a second now. And the way I do it is this. You see all these women taking all these products, putting them on their skin, and so on and so forth. Here's what happens. Here's what aging's about. The carotid artery in your neck, right? Yeah. Starts to clog up. The blood flow slows down to the face. Then you see the wrinkles and all that kind of thing. And that's why if anybody experts talking to me about water, the first thing I consider is the age and looking at the person's face. And that way you know if they know what they're talking about. It's that simple. Now, I'll give you an example. Well, I went down to, uh, to see my brother. Well, we go every once a year to get a fizzler. We get down together, and then uh, we take the doctor to lunch. And, of course, this time he was kidding us about that. I won't go into that. But anyway, <laughs> and he said, you know, it's three years now since you had a stress test and so on. Well, I had been eating a dozen eggs a week for six months on purpose because I knew I was going to get that test. Well, my cholesterol was 146. It's supposed to be between 140 and 200. If it goes much over 200, then you may have a problem. They're not too wild about that. So he made an appointment for me at the hospital, and I went there. So the, they came out to get me and take me in there the test, and they thought they'd made a mistake. They asked me my date of birth three times. <laughs> I said I was born in 1930. They said it can't be. You know, look that old. So anyway, they did the stress and the carotid artery test, and of course came out with fine colors and all that. But that's what people don't realize. That carotid artery in the neck 
as soon as it starts to clog, that's why people age. That's why they start to get old looking. And what our water does, that clears your arteries. And I'll give you a good example of that, and that's with people with cancer. And we get this feedback from Sloan Kettering. In fact, I had a man not too long ago call me. He said, you know, your machines cure cancer. I said, well, how do you know that? He said, because I've been an oncologist for 30 years. I retired from Sloan Kettering, and I don't have access to your machines anymore. His name is Dalton Casella. His name is on the website. But anyway, the reason I mention that, what's happening is this. In the bloodstream, your blood's 90 94% water. And that's why Dr. Abraham was testing blood flow. You know, using Delta Alpha sound and all that kind of thing. All the markers, whatever diseases you have in your bloodstream, the hydrogen now, which is so readily available, just like cooking on a stove with propane or hydrogen, right? The hydrogen burns up the impurities in your bloodstream. How do you know that? Feedback, Sloan Kettering, after two or three days, the urine starts to stink, light brown, light green, and so on. You're clearing out the arteries. Probably what they're doing, I would think they would do, be doing this, and they probably are, because they don't tell you everything, because cancer's a business. You know, they make money off of it. But wouldn't you think the first thing you'd do before you treated a person, you'd give them my water to clear the markers out of your bloodstream? Then, if you're going to do it, then treat them or whatever you're going to do. That's just common sense. How much of your water do you recommend to people a day since it has a homeopathic application? So, for example, if I drink, I personally, John, let's say I drink um, 12 glasses of water a day. How much of your water do I need to dilute into that to be effective? Okay, there's two ways to look at it. Okay. If people have a machine, they do what I do. They drink it straight. And when they first get the machine, they drink a lot of the water at first to get all their blood changed over to our water. Then after that, then they just drink a few glasses a day or whatever they would normally drink. Now, if they don't have a machine because it's homeopathic, it's not as good as drinking it straight, obviously. You add a few drops to every glass of water that you drink, that's all. And mix it in. you got to mix it. Okay. In fact, i tell you, sort of an interesting one, where a man, they manufacture a mineral drink. And they kept 225 gallons in these big stainless steel tanks to do a test on our water. It was kind of interesting. So they added only 2% of our water to that tank, and then they mixed it in. With 6,000 CFUs, that's colony forming units of bacteria. And then they let it incubate for five days. Now, here's the point of the whole thing. If you did that with any other water, we don't care how pure it is or whatever, the bacteria can, after five days, would skyrocket to a million or more CFUs. If you drank a bottle, it would be enough to kill you. Instead, their independent lab test that they sent us was below their quality control standard. That's exactly why it worked at that waste lagoon that they thought was untreatable and why it's a matter of record with the Department of Environmental Quality, the DEQ, for the same reason. But I can tell you this. There's thousands of people out there that are dealers selling water machines. Most of them don't have degrees in their field. They don't know what they're talking about, most of them. They're killing people right and left because the, they're misleading the people about what they're drinking. And then also, you've got some people that have their own agenda. You know, we're not <laughs> well liked, as you can imagine, in the water industry. And yet I have one man who wrote me two letters, and I've talked to him on the phone. He's called me. He's got two chemistry engineering degrees from MIT, and he's a retired professor. 
So one of the letters he wrote me, he said, you know, one of the things I've been trying to do is to come up with a way that people could test your water, and it's a way that most men would like. He said, I've been bald for years. He said, there's passport pictures of me and my driver's license. He said, every morning and night, I take a soft brush, brush my dome, and I put a little bit of your water on my scalp, and I just let it dry that way, and I do it morning and night. Now, after a while, in a few weeks, you'll see a little fuzz growing there. And then a little while later, the hair starts to grow enough that people notice it. And now, it looks like I have a full head of hair. It's just thinning a little bit, and it keeps getting thicker. But now here's a guy with an MIT degree, great guy. Uh, he's 80 years old, a little younger than I am. But they get so enthralled by the different things that the machines will do. And I've had a lot of scientists call me and say, that's the thing about your machine. There's so many things that this water does. We're throwing sand against the tide. You know, there's, there's a lot of forces and in industry and so on. They don't want what we're doing on the market. I totally get it, and I'm amazed that you have been permitted to live this long doing what you're doing. Well, let's put it this way. I've got three drivers. They all carry. One is a police chief. My own limo and things like that. I'm very careful what I do and where I go. However, now there's so many machines out there. And, of course, there's so many people that can carry on for me that this will come to the fore eventually because people are not going to keep paying exorbitant energy bills and wasting their money the way they're doing it, just trying to keep everything together. And that's why people that have our machines, I've had a lot of people say that, to me, they're more valuable than anything that I own. Listen, I want to ask you one more question before we complete the show. There, you know, you and I could go on for hours, and you know, I'm like Columbo; I could keep going. But I have a couple. You know, all you gotta do is wind me up. I know, <laughs> but me too. But I, I got two more before we before we wrap up the first part of this show, and it's the following. I was thinking as you were talking about the, you know, taking the water, doing hot, then doing cold, and doing it hundreds of times. That's what we do. Right, but wait. Here's my question. The steam that comes up from that, which is a result of all this ma- this cleaning, right? This clearing and distilling. Aren't the viruses and the parasites then in the air? Like in your home no, when it's happening? No, they're destroyed. It's like it's like turning on your stove, right? Propane stove. Okay. When the propane just burns up, you know, it just disappears. That's the end of it. And also, the amount of viruses and bacteria that you're talking about, they're very tiny, and they're destroyed completely by that constant heating and cooling with the UV. See, there's only a three-inch steam rise in our machine. It's almost nothing. So here you got with two balls that are highly concentrated. It's not like a UV system that they use in a house that doesn't do much of anything where the water goes rushing by a tube, a UV tube. There's not enough destruction time. It's not working as well as it should. Right. So I guess my question, just to wrap the question, was I got I got your answer. I do uh, receive you. My question to you is, since some of these things take extra long destruction time, which I was listening to what you said. Yeah, definitely. So in the, like the early- one I mentioned about hepatitis. In the, but, but John, in 30 minutes of boiling, and people now they wonder, oh, gee, I wonder how I got hepatitis. Right, but in the five minutes, for example, let's just stay with me on the track, okay? Stay with me on this track. So let's say in the first five minutes of a 30-minute steaming and destruction time that's needed for something, okay? Right. In the first five minutes when the steam comes up in the air from your unit, and it hasn't had the 30 minutes of destruction time, yeah, what well, is it's, it's going it's going back and forth over and over and over and over again and part of it are trade secrets okay like right. why is the boiler round 
That came from Victor Schauberger. I was throwing the discus in Berlin. In fact, I won the discus in Berlin back in the early 50s with one throw left. How oh boy with that. Stadium, stadium was packed, 100,000 people or whatever. And some old guy walked up to me and said, you know, the way you throw the discus, that fast turn about the vortex. And years later, well, at the time they told me who it was, but he wasn't well known at that time. But then years later, people that I knew, you know, in the track and field and everything, they said, yeah, that's who that was. So you met Victor Schoberger? Wow. That's history making. That's huge. That's right, because what he did with, I mean, I was very interesting. Here you got logs going down a flume straight down. Of course, they'd, they'd collect and jam up the flume and everything. So he had this idea, well, what if I put fins in there to make the water go back and forth like a snake? And that way the logs would levitate and go down the flume. Well, he came up with that because he was a forester. That's what he did. And just quickly, let me say this very quickly. Yes. Have you ever noticed the stream? You never see a stream go in a straight line. It's always like a snake. It winds back and forth, back and forth, over and over again. It goes for miles down wherever it's going. But anyway, now, here's how some water has a little more energy than other water. The water on the surface, right, it goes through the shade where the water is a little bit cooler. Then it goes into the sunlight, gets a little bit warmer, then a little cooler, a little warmer. Now, that has a a livening effect to the water. Now, there are some places, you've got Lourdes in France, you've got Nordendau, Germany, you've got uh, Villacambamba in Peru, where the water in the ground is being heated and cooled as the water travels through the ground into different areas. And that's why some of that water has a livening effect. And that's why what we do, we we accentuate it tremendously, constantly heating and cooling that water. And that's why it produces the results that it does. And if anybody has any doubts, like I said earlier, I repeat, if you have some expert that you're interviewing, look at his face, and then you interpolate that with his age, and you can figure out if that person even knows what they're talking about. Well, then I must look like I'm on the water of the Fountain of Youth. <laughs> it definitely is. There is a Fountain of Youth, and that's exactly what it is. I'm and kidding. I had a great man call me, a little older than I am. He said, when I was 85, I had cancer and diabetes. He said, I was so sick, I made out my will. But here's one of the good things I did. I bought one of your machines. That's why I'm alive today. I'm 103, and I got rid of cancer and diabetes. Fantastic. Listen, See what he did? Yes. He burned up the markers in his bloodstream. That's all he did. You talk about the markers being in the body. Why is it that it's very important to get rid of any markers that are still in the body from the water that we're drinking that hasn't been distilled properly? Why are the markers well, relevant? Well, the markers end up in your bloodstream, of course. And that's why when you go to the hospital, the first thing they do, they give you a blood test. And then they're looking for those markers to see whatever disease you might happen to have. So therefore, common sense tells us, burn up those markers in your bloodstream. Your body's 75% water. Or more, they say. Your blood's around 90, 94%. And so... Your body, all the time, like I alluded to earlier, is using energy. That's what the immune system is right, doing. Right, right, right. You covered that. To fight off all these diseases. So obviously, if you drink water that has, where it takes a lot of energy to split that water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen so it can be utilized, then your immune system has that much less energy to fight off disease. And that's why if you smoke a lot and you do this and that and the other, those are all things that burn up energy, and therefore you become prone to a disease. That's what it's all about. Okay, last question. And that is that even though you've written about, and I saw in your video, 
that you talked about how these alkaline waters, it's a big push that people were saying that these alkaline waters, they heal and they cure. And so people went out and companies made these alkaline water machines for four and five thousand dollars and seven thousand dollars. And then I heard in one of your videos, you talked about a guy named, is it Hiroshi, the guy who now does the hydrogen stick? He was the one who pushed and promoted the uh, the alkaline water from Japan. Right. But you, you said he recanted his whole thing about alkaline water. Yeah, that's why he went to the, well, you know, this was over the years, but that's why he went to a hydrogen stick, he calls it. And in Japan, what they don't tell you is, in the 70s, they closed down a whole bunch of companies making them because people getting sick and all kinds of problems. And this business about alkaline and acidic and all that, your body does that automatically. Give you an example. How about apple cider vinegar? That's highly acidic. Yes. And yet it has an alkaline reaction on your body. Right. And also, the water coming out of those machines, the viruses go right through them. And even if you put a filter on there, the filter... The virus is going through. The hydrogen bond angle is still 104 degrees. It's not changing it. And why don't they look like I said? Take a old person, look at their face. And if they've been drinking that water, if they get that old, now I'm not so sure they all do, but if they did, you'll see it doesn't do anything. That video that we've got at Genova.com with a hydrogen generator, that's how you can prove a scam. Take any of that water, add 20 drops to any hydrogen generator, and see what you get. The power required will be exactly the same. Nothing changes. That's how the people are being scammed. There's no energy in that water. The way you prove it is using our water. In fact, the guy that did that, actually he added only 10 drops at first. And the and the ammeter went from 31. It gradually went down to to seven amps. And he said, "Gee, if it did that, how about if I had ten more?" So he added ten more, and that's when it went down to virtually zero. And the actual reading is about a half to one amp, while producing the same amount of hydrogen. Now that's been done hundreds of times. And what I should be doing is developing these hydrogen generators so everybody has a unit that goes in their backyard about the size of an air conditioner. It produces hydrogen on demand. They can have all the power they need for pennies. I'm going to send a security force over to you to keep you alive after what you just said. <laughs> and I'm sure, and the oil companies love us. God and what's interesting us. about it, one of the things I did for a while when I was a, a youngster, I was a well logging engineer in California. <laughs> wow. But well, anyway, that's the answer. Right, right. And that's all Obama has to do if he wants to, you know, protect any legacy. If he comes up with that, you know, and that doesn't take a lot of funding. That's I wouldn't just, count if they on don't it. care, why should I even <laughs> bother, you know? Well, I think you I think you may want to bother before the end of your life. Uh, and I, I wouldn't say don't care because government is not particularly vested in that. I think that for a breakaway civilization to prepare itself for a future... Uh, is not going to wait on governments anymore. People will just build what they need to build, use them, share them with friends, family, loved ones. Uh, and the greatest thing to do is to open source that. Don't patent it. Get it out in the public domain so it can't be stopped. John I Ellis. Know, but the thing is, this. I own property and all that kind of thing. But it's a cash flow thing. It takes money to get, you know, you've got to build these things to get it out there. Now, the man I mentioned earlier, who's uh, Prince Rainier's cousin, Gilbert D. he's 94, I told you about him earlier on. Yes. And he said, he brought it up, I didn't. He said, I want you to write Michelle Obama and mention my name. Because, you know, he's so well known, they would listen, you know. Well, if he's so and well known to them, he could pick up the done. phone. Because the other thing you've got is this. You've got third world countries. Kids are dying. All they have to do is do the wells with my water, with my technique. 
they have got municipal waste lagoon, just like the one they treated out there. You know, it's supposed to be untreatable. And it's killing people all over the world. You've got millions of people dying because they don't do what we're doing. And it's very simple to do. So that's why he goes all over Europe telling people about our machines. And he's been buying E5s from us for the, what, the last six years or so. I don't know how many years now. But anyway, well, I think listen. I'm 94, and he's quite interesting. He's got a brother, Denny's, D-E-N-Y-S. Too bad he didn't have a machine. But he's a movie maker, and he also is a painter and so on. And the people visiting his place at Camargue was Picasso, Ernest Hemingway, Salvador Dali. And Salvador Dali, I think I mentioned that quickly, but he used me for his Christ in the Andes when he was staying at the uh, hotel down there in New York. But I won't bore you with all no, that. No, that's very exciting. But, now, I understand you're sending Greenhouse over to Europe to talk to them and arrange the whole thing so we don't have to go through the White House. Is that true? Could be. <laughs> <laughs> you're a smart man. <laughs> well, John Ellis... You know, I'm not that smart. <laughs> if, here's what it's all about. If I was smart, I wouldn't be in this business. <laughs> it's like I said earlier. It's like throwing sand against the tide. But when you think about it, or <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny about it, but I've been doing this, what now? 50 years? For at least 40 years. 40 and years. And that's all I do day and night. It's always about water. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you've created. I appreciate the hanging in there and standing your ground and all the things that you've developed and the new knowledge that you've been bringing the world, really, for at least 40 years. I thank you for for really everything. And nothing you've done is in vain. You've helped so many people. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, from all of us at It's Rainmaking Time, we want to thank you. For those of you who are interested in John Ellis's work and his uh, distillers, please go to johnellis.com. You can also go to watercuresanything.com. Uh, and you can go to also johnelliswater.com. And they John, call us. Yes, go We've ahead. We've got an 800 number, 800-433-9553. And there's a recording on there, so you won't feel like you're being talking to buying a machine or anything else. Or you can call us, 845-754-8673. If you want to talk to me, I'll, when I can, I'll talk to you. Or you can call our other property in Pennsylvania. They'll send you free water, 570-296-0214. Hopefully you're going to change the world. Who knows? Well, if they do ask for free water, John, they should at least say the three magic words. It's rainmaking time. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we'd appreciate if they would do that. Because that way we're going to push what you do. Because I think you're terrific. I think Thank it's you. great what you're doing. Thank you. I, I can't even name one other person that's doing what exactly what you're doing. And that can change the world. People don't realize it. But the energy crisis is, is terrible. It's getting worse all the time. And quickly, it's just like that man yesterday from St. John's paying 53 cents a kilowatt hour for for electricity. Absolutely insane. Thank you so much, John. Great talking to you. It's rainmaking time. Rainmaking time. It's rainmaking <laughs> time. But anyway, see you later. See you later. Lots of love. Okay, bye. Bye bye.